Our goal in this video is going to be to study dynamic models, which we can see we have a definition as um, they're models where the variables aren't for a particular time period, frozen in time, but instead there's multiple different time periods and the variables will have a value for each of those time periods. For instance, we have here periods 0, 1, 2, 3, um, denoted by t, which, which stands for a time period. And our vehicle for making that sort of abstract definition more concrete is the bathtub model, which we used as a simple model to sort of get a handle on this concept of unemployment and what determines the natural rate of unemployment. And the bathtub model has three key variables that all evolve over time periods. There's L subscript T, the T here helping remind us that um, this, this variable will take on different values in different time periods. So LT denotes the size of the labor force, uh, ET denotes the number of people who are employed, and UT denotes the number of people who are unemployed. And a quick note that helps make this model more tractable is that only two of these variables are endogenous. ET and UT are endogenous. They're going to be determined by the model. LT, on the other hand, is exogenous in the basic model. So the total number of people in the labor force is fixed. And what the model explains is how they shuffle back and forth between being employed or unemployed. So the way we can think of this model um, in, a, in a graphical way that might be helpful is that we could imagine U here represents, this box here represents like the number of people who are unemployed. And it can grow and shrink as people become unemployed or find a job and are no longer unemployed. So we could think of it like, the reason this is called a bathtub model is you could think of U as like a bathtub and then there's a flow of water or flow of people into this state of unemployment which is a flow in here. And this represents people who are becoming unemployed. And then sort of naturally enough though, we could have a drain to that bathtub and that would represent water flowing out or people flowing out of this state of being unemployed. And those are people who are finding jobs, right? They're no longer unemployed. So people finding jobs. And then you might say, well, wait a minute, couldn't people stop being unemployed if, for instance, they just left the labor force? And that gets back to what we said on the, the previous page. Um, the size of the labor force is fixed. People aren't allowed to enter or leave it to simplify things in this model, and that helps simplify this um, flow of people into and out of unemployment. So we could just leave the picture like this, but it would help maybe to think about, well, where are these people who are finding jobs going? They're going to a different state. They're becoming employed. So the same way we have flows of people into and out of unemployment, we also have flows of people into and out of employment. The flow in is people finding jobs, and the flow out is then people becoming unemployed. They're losing their job. They're being separated from their job. So this is the schematic way of thinking about the model, sort of visually, and it helps us think about what's causing unemployment to change. But of course, to do calculations, we're going to need some actual equations. And the key equation for this type of model, for a dynamic model, is that you're always going to need some law of motion, which is a fancy way of saying it's, a, it's an equation that relates period t variable to a period t plus 1 variable. So here it'll be a, an equation that relates unemployment in period t to unemployment in the next period, uh, ut plus 1. And the equation I wrote out here is, is clearly not something you can calculate with but it tells us what we're trying to understand or what we're trying to think about when we set up this equation. It says unemployment in period t plus one, so the number of people unemployed next period, say next month, is gonna be the number of people unemployed this period minus the number of people who found jobs because they're no longer unemployed. That's like the flow out of the tub. Plus, we're gonna to have to add in the number of people who became unemployed. That's like the flow into the tub. And that'll tell us the total number of people who are unemployed next period. It'll be whoever we started with, minus who we lost, plus who we gained. And that should make, I hope, in some good intuitive sense. But now we need to turn this into something concrete. So the UT we can leave alone, but we need an expression for like, well, you know, what fraction of people find jobs? And ideally we'd set up a whole, a whole model of like, you know, how people search for jobs and why do they search hard or why do they not search very hard and what helps them find a job and how does the labor market conditions feed into this. But we want this model to be simple. So we're just going to say some fraction F of people find jobs each period. And because of that, F times UT people 
um, find a job. We, they, we, they, they find a job and they no longer are unemployed. Similarly, we're going to have a really simple model for the number of people who become unemployed. It's going to be some fraction s are separated from their job each period. And hopefully this fraction s is quite small, you know, ideally that would be the case. But to make it simple, we'll just have some static fraction s. So plus s times the number of people employed, or et. And this, this gives us our law of motion. So I'm going to fill in the ut plus 1 and put a box around this, because this is really the key equation in the model. And now you might say to yourself, well, don't we have two key variables, two endogenous variables? We have ut and et. If we have a law of motion for ut, don't we need one for et? And the answer is sort of. But as you'll see on the next page, if we keep track of ut, that gives us enough information to find et. So we could set up a law of motion for et, but it really would be, you know, sort of extra work that we don't really need to do, so we're not going to do it. All right, so we've got our law of motion. I've re uh, rewrote it here at the top of the page. And I've also wrote on the, on the far right the um, lt, by definition, is ut plus et. That's going to be important because it means that if we know lt and ut, we can calculate the third one, et, that we don't know. And uh, we'll, we'll be doing that below. And finally, in order to start doing some calculations, we're going to need to know, you know, what is s? What fraction of people separate from work each period? And what is f? What fraction of people who are unemployed find a job? I think realistically, F should be pretty big. People are people search hard. They're going to find a job if they can. So that's probably something like 50%, whereas separation should be pretty low. Um, most people don't lose their job in any given month or quit their job in any given month. So we'll say that that's like 0.1, which honestly is probably too high, but, you know, it's a nice round number. All right, so how are we going to actually do some calculations with this model? Well, we've listed out the time periods, and now what we'd like to do is sort of fill in this table. We have time periods 0, 1, 2, 3, and we'd like to get ut, et, and lt for each time period. We said at the beginning that lt is exogenous, so these are just going to have to be given to us. And let's suppose, just to have nice round numbers, that lt is 10, and then it never changes. And that'll be our standard assumption for all of these problems, is that lt doesn't change. And the reason we don't want it to change is that if it did, if the labor force grew, we'd have to say, well, these new people who enter the labor force, what do they become when they enter? Do they enter and automatically have a job, or do they enter and automatically become unemployed? And that would complicate things a bit. <coughs> All right. The other thing we'll need before we can start calculating is that our law of motion tells us how to get ut plus 1 if we know ut. So we have to know what is ut to start with? We can't just start this model off and say, we don't know what ut is, get ut plus 1. We'll have to have some starting point. And a simple starting point would be, we could say, let's say 5 people are unemployed. That's, um, that's a nice round number. And then finally, let's remind ourselves, et, based on our equation on the far upper right, is lt minus ut. So if we know lt and ut, which we do for period 0, we can calculate et. It must be 5 so that they add up to 10. All right, great. So now we can start doing some calculating. So let's get ut plus 1. We'll have u for period 1 is going to be u in period 0 minus f, which is 0 0.5, times u in period 0, which is 5. I guess I should go back and let me erase u0 and just put a 5. We know what it is. It's 5 uh, plus the number of people who separate from their jobs which is 0.1, that's s, times et, which is 5. So we get 5 minus 2.5 plus 0.5, which is 3. So u1, u in period 1 is 3, and that implies that e must be 7, so that they add up to 10. And I'm going to fill in the rest of the table now, because I want you to do, the, do that as an exercise, and then just verify your answers with uh, comparing them to what you see here. So pause the video and try to fill in the table as an exercise, and then when you're done, we'll fill them in together. Great, so you're back. You've got some numbers. I'm going to fill them in there. 2.2, which implies 7.8 are employed, and then 1.88, which implies 8.12 are employed. And you might notice a trend here. We started with a lot of people unemployed. Half the people actually were unemployed, 5 out of 10. And it decreased to 3, then to 2.2, then to 1.88. It looks like it's just continuing to head down. And we might ask, is there like a point where this will stop, where it will be steady? It'll just sort of reach its, its natural 
uh, resting point? And the answer is yes. So in our next video, we're going to start studying the, the concept of a steady state, the point it reaches and becomes steady.